in the last video i used this paint see how bright that is just too bright but i had another can of this unopened so i took it down to my uh, body shop supply where i get my paint and i brought it to adrian and i uh showed him this thermos and he actually matched the paint to the thermos look at that it's almost identical okay 1970s thermos so we're going to go ahead i'm going to mix up about four ounces three or four ounces of this i'm going to shoot the rims so i'm going to give it about then three coats so i'm going to do the flash coat which is the first one let that set up and i'm going to do another coat i'm going to sand and then i'm going to do the final coat and what I'm doing is I'm using my Euro gun. See that? I got this at Polo's Auto Body. You can't shoot more than 20 PSI out of this gun. It only has a 1.3 millimeter tip. So it's only for paint and clear coat. Now, if you want to shoot primer, you're going to want something with a tip, say 1.7 to 2.0. And you also want to have a gun that you specifically use just for primer because uh, it's just kind of gnarly stuff. If I put primer through here and I didn't clean this thing properly, I'd completely ruin it. Well, first of all, the tip is too small, but they don't recommend primer going in this. Now, the nice thing about this, you could buy parts for this. You can have this rebuilt. So um, I put a gauge on here, see that? So I never get more than 20 PSI, can't hurt the gun. And here's how you adjust the air right here. So we're gonna go ahead and mix them up and shoot our rims. As soon as I finish spraying the rims, I walk right over and I put this fan on full blast. And if you notice, see the wind isn't, it's blowing on the paint, it's blowing over the rims. The reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to keep bugs away because the other night when I painted these rims the first time, a whole bunch of little like black looking fly things landed all over and just got stuck in the paint. So now they can't even go anywhere near this. As soon as they go over here, they're gonna get blown away. So that's my tip for you. Have a high power fan ready to just blow those bugs off the of stuff. Now this color I really like, it's really a cool avocado green. So we're gonna let this sit up and then I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat. Hey everybody, West Coast Johnny, thanks for stopping by. This is a huge weekend around here because I'm painting all eight of these cabinets. They're gonna get painted the final coat, the final paint job. Right now they're just in primer. I'm gonna paint them the, 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 the color that they're gonna be. Then I'm gonna put the little edge, the little edge uh, around them. There's like this 9 16 by eight inch edging you can get. Then we're going to put our floor in tomorrow and install the cabinets permanently in because on Monday the trailer's leaving to go get some electrical work done. So we got a lot to do and I'm really excited. Also, I want to show you something. Remember the trailer frame I painted with the Pour 15 and I was telling you how great it was? Well. A subscriber named Chris Donnelly, who comes from Otter Tail, Minnesota, him and his wife, they've restored close to 30 of these trailers. And a lot of them, believe it or not, were sitting out on like frozen lakes being used for fishing. They cut the bottom out and then you sit inside with a little furnace to keep warm and you make a hole in the ice and you catch fish. And sometimes they have huts. Some people will make like tents. Well, people were using these old egg trailers and Chris and his wife salvaged like 30 of them and completely restored them. Well, anyways, I wanna show you something on the Pour 15 Tongue. Check this out. See that beautiful finish? Man, that's gorgeous. It looks like it was sprayed. Well, what I didn't know was that UV protection is very weak in this exposed 
stuff, okay? Like when I painted the frame underneath, that's great. And I, when I told you hot rodders paint their frames, they never worry about it, they don't. But they're out of the sunlight. Well, apparently what's gonna happen here in about a month or so is this is supposed to get like a gray chalky finish because it wasn't uh, treated with a product another product by 415 called top coat so i'm going to pick up some top coat i'm going to paint this again and that's going to have the uv protection we're also going to paint the back bumper pieces because i'm making a custom bumper i have all the parts cut out i'm just waiting for my buddy uh he works for good guys car shows he's going to come out with his welder and we're going to weld this bumper together okay so thank you, Chris Donnelly from Otter Tail, Minnesota for the great tip. He also mentioned using Sealess Seal. And he says that that's the only product that Scamp recommends and he's tried everything and this works great. So thanks, Chris. We're gonna grab some Sealess Seal. There's the wheels. I absolutely love the avocado green. So anyways, I'm gonna get started. We got a lot of painting to do. Let's start. All right, well, I wanted to show you uh, my schedule I keep just for this scamp trailer. So here it is. I highly recommend everybody, if you have a project that you're doing, get yourself something like this if the project's kind of big and it needs to be, you know, it's not something small you're doing, but maybe you're restoring an old car or building a house. I mean, there's always a schedule to keep if you want to progress, you know, so we are in this week or tomorrow. Okay, so here's the perfect example why you wanna schedule things week by week and you never wanna schedule things when that week starts. In other words, you don't wanna be sitting around on Monday morning at eight o'clock saying, okay, what are we gonna do this week? You want to have done that the week before. So when Monday morning, eight o'clock comes, you already know what you're doing. You're like already, you know, hitting the ground running. So. Because here's a, and here's another example, paint wheels, interior and cabinets. Well, the wheels are done. The interior is getting done today. I'm sorry. The interior has been all painted. The cabinets get painted today. So I'm on the last day. So they have to be done today. And if I do them today, okay, then I would be keeping my schedule. So then tomorrow I'm going to install the flooring because in the cabinets, because we're dropping the scamp off for a week. Um, then this week I'm starting the 1930 Ford Model A hot rod project. Um, the dashboard, it's really cool. So then we get the scamp back and it's the door prep for paint. I'll probably be painting right around here, which is perfect because I said I was gonna have this thing done in six weeks and I'm right on schedule. So try to keep things on schedule. And like I said, don't do a daily countdown. If you have a big job, don't, you want to divide and conquer everything in steps and weeks. <clears throat> Give yourself a week to do a couple things. You can do them right away or not, but either way, if you wait till the end, they're going to be done that week. But it's hard to do that with a day. And you don't want to do a countdown of days. You can do a countdown with weeks. It's just a lot easier that way. So, I just want to show you that. I'm going to go out and start painting. So, I just wanted to tell you, the reason I'm sanding like this with the orbital, I know it seems like it'd be easier just to go like this, but if you just go like this to do the corners, you're going to have some flat lines and then show up in the paint. So you just have to go like this, back and forth, back and forth, back, the whole thing, all the way around. Get all your edges all nice and smooth. All right, well, this is the one cabinet that did not come out, so I'm doing all the body work on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint it in place. So it's gonna have an outlet right there. 
it has a lot of holes from I'm not really sure but I did have to patch a lot of stuff so that's that just wanted to show you okay that one's perfect just gonna do all of these one at a time okay I wanted to also show you when you're sanding holes that you had filled over with a filler and you're now sanding it. Remember I was saying in another video, you have to sand it until it, it actually has what's called an ombre finish. See that? That's an ombre finish. That is not. See, there's a defined line. There's a defined line. And there's a defined line. And even though you go like this and you can't feel anything, I mean, barely, it's gonna show up in the paint. So if you don't want that to show up in the paint, you wanna sand it until there's no defined edge. It looks like this, just like that. And we call that an ombre finish. So everything has to have the ombre finish. Then we can go ahead and mask off and I'm gonna prime this cabinet. Okay, well, I painted all the cabinets yesterday and there was some little pinholes that kind of popped up. So what I did was I filled the little pinholes with my um, glazing filler, sanded it and just put some primer on here, some flat white primer. And now you can't see them. So when I paint these today to do the second coat, I also did some here. There was a little spot there, here, um, where I just had to use the filler, the Vitek filler. We had a spot here, here, and then I primed it with white primer, just so that when I, you know, paint, it'll look nice. Now here's the inside cabinet. I was able to get that all papered off, did all the body work, primed it, and now I just, I'm doing some of the minute imperfections. I had some tiny little bubbles and I'm just filling them with the Vitek glaze so that when I paint this cabinet today in place, all the cabinets will be done. And here's the glaze I'm talking about. It's, um, it's very, very, very smooth. And when you put it on, it's, you know, it's just for like tiny little pin dots like little pinholes that sometimes appear in paint. So that gets all the little pinholes away. And you just mix it up with the cream hardener. And then I'm just hitting it with 220 sandpaper. And then I'm just priming it with some primer in a can. Okay, well, I just got that cabinet all painted. So now when that dries, I can work on the floor. Well, it's getting late and I'm gonna call it a night. Thanks for joining. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave a comment or a like and tell me what you're working on. All right, everybody, take care.